everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley, and today I'm gonna to be talking about all the books I read in the month of September. I read quite a bit in September. I feel like it was a pretty decent reading month in terms of like reading a lot. I didn't have a lot of great reads, but I did get through quite a bit of reading. So we have a lot to talk about, so I'm gonna try to keep it snappy and we can go ahead and jump right on into the books. So I'll start with my DNFs of the month. I actually had several, which is pretty uncommon for me. So I was proud of myself for actually putting books down that I was not interested in. And so the first one, I talked about it in last month's wrap up because I was reading it at the time and I thought I was going to finish it pretty soon is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. Everybody loves this book. I have been seeing literally nothing other than five star reviews, but it was not for me. I did not like it. I do feel bad because this was like my work book club group selection, but I think a lot of people just ended up not reading it or not finishing it because not many people were actually talking about it anyway. So whatever, I think it's fine. I got a little over halfway into this book. The halfway point is like when the story takes a bit of a turning point. So if you didn't know, this is from the same author of The Martian. Uh, did not read The Martian, but I did see the movie and I really liked that movie. So this is a sci-fi book. It is quite a bit outside of my comfort zone, but because it got such great reviews and because I enjoyed The Martian, the movie, I I wanted to give this a shot. This is about a man who is in space and when he comes to, he has no memory of who he is or why he's really there because he's been in a coma for a while and it, he's just on like this exploration journey of why he's there, what's going on, learning about how the world is ending and why he's on this Hail Mary mission. And yeah, kind of goes from there. There's like a surprise thing that happens at the midway point that kind of changes the story a bit and everyone loves that so much. So once I figured out what that was and I still wasn't loving the story, I was like, yeah, I don't feel like I need to Read more of this. It is very science heavy. It is in a light tone and you don't have to understand everything, but I was just really bored. I don't really like the story of a person waking up and not having their memory. I didn't really like the tone of the book. Like it's really silly, lighthearted tone. And I don't know, I just didn't really like it. So I just didn't finish it. I do think this is being adapted into a movie and I would watch the movie because that would be less time wasted. <laughs> and then the other book that I DNF this month, I didn't really read much of it, but I could just already tell it wasn't going to be for me right now. And that is Piranesi, Piranesi by Susanna Clark. So this is a book I've had for a while. It was a book of the month edition I got a couple months ago and I've been really interested in it. I thought it would be a good like cozy fall read. I haven't really heard anyone really talk about what this book is about or give reviews. I just heard like general praise of the book. I didn't really know if it would be for me. So it turns out that what this book is about is this guy named Piranesi who estimates that he's 30 something years old and it kind of feels a little similar Project Hail Mary because he is like documenting this world that he's in, but he doesn't have like all the information about himself and the history of it. There's like 15 known people that have existed in his creation of wherever he is because he finds these corpses everywhere and he's like documenting his notes. And then there's one other guy called The Other who's this older man who's like trying to do some great discovery of knowledge in some way. I really did not read much of this book. I only got like 40 pages in or something. And I could just tell this one's gonna take me a while to get through. It wasn't gonna be worth my time to try to uh, sit and take longer with now. So maybe I would do like the audiobook of this and try to give it a little bit longer of a chance, but it really reminded me of like the Starless Sea because it is in this, the world is like these hallways in this like, I don't know, like this big place. And there's like all these different great halls and there are oceans within the halls and some of them flood and they have different tide patterns. And then there's all these statues like this one that kind of line the past and that's how he like documents the world. It just very much gave me Starless Sea vibes, which I did not like. And so maybe I'll try it later, but probably wouldn't be a book that I would really enjoy. So now we can get into the books that I did read and did enjoy. So at the beginning of September, I was a co-host for the Thrill to the Weekend Readathon that is hosted by Jacqueline. And so I have a vlog for that readathon that you can check out to see about my reading from that time. I ended up reading Our Buddy Read Infinite by Brian Freeman and then this short novella Blinky by Keelan Patrick Burke during that readathon. So I can tell you a little bit about those books, but if you want to hear more about them, you can check out my vlog. Infinite is a story about this man who meets these different versions of himself and he is trying to like run away from them because the one seems like it's evil and like trying to ruin his life. The main character is going through a lot of trauma and depression because he was the cause of a car accident that killed his wife and so he's also dealing with that and then there's this 
psychotherapist who has this theory of the, the many worlds theory that is supposed to be used to help treat people with mental health issues. Then he starts encountering this other version of himself and his life like seems in danger. So it's like a fast paced kind of alternate reality thriller. And I ended up giving this book, I think three stars. I thought it was a good page turner. It was definitely fun to read. I really just don't remember a ton about it at this point. So it wasn't a super memorable book. When there's books that are like really confusing like that and super fast paced, it's like hard for me to remember a lot of details about them anyways. So yeah, it was a fun time, especially it was fun for the readathon and the book discussion that we had, but it's not like a favorite standout of mine. And then Blanky. This is a novella that I picked up that is also about this man who is grieving, but this time it is after the loss of his child. He and his wife are currently going through like a separation phase because they are just grieving the loss of their child and that kind of pulled them apart from one another. And then the man ends up finding the baby's blanket in the house. And that's strange because they buried their baby with that blanket and then it becomes like a haunted blanket story. So this one also ended up being like a three star for me. It was definitely a fun, fast, read. There were definitely some creepy moments that are quite memorable <laughs> with the horror imagery in them. The end has like a bit of a twist that I don't know how I feel about it. And overall, like it didn't feel like this story really made a big impact on me. So it was just like a three star fun time. Next up, I did a vlog where I read a couple of new thriller books. So if you want to hear more about any of these books, you can go check out my vlog where I read all these books, but I will also share my quick thoughts on all of these. So first I'll start with Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. This was my first Alice Feeney book. This is a story about this couple who is going through a rocky point in their marriage. And so they end up going away to this isolated cabin that they win like a giveaway kind of trip to. When they get there, creepy things start happening. And the narrative is also interspersed with letters that the wife wrote to the husband every year for their anniversary. So you're kind of building up to see what went wrong in their marriage. And then also with them at this isolated cabin where it feels like one of them may not return alive. And it's just really tense, really, really fun. I really loved it. And I will definitely be reading more from Alice Feeney. And I gave this one five stars. Next up, we have Not a Happy Family by Sherry Lapina. This is my first Sherry Lapina book. This is definitely more of a mystery than a thriller. And I talk about that in my vlog. But this is a story about these rich siblings whose parents are murdered after Easter dinner and all the children kind of seem like they could be responsible for it because they're all these rich brats who just want their parents' money and they all suck. And so the whole book is just trying to figure out who killed the parents, if it was one of the siblings or if it was someone else. Everyone kind of seems like they have their own motive and there are other family members that also end up coming into the story. So it's really just like a big who done it. I thought it was okay. The writing was definitely fine. I did end up getting pretty bored with this and was just like, okay, come on, like just tell me who did it. And then once the reveal came at the end, I was not very satisfied. It was just kind of a disappointment. Like it just didn't feel that exciting because it really could have been anyone. You could have made it anyone at the end and I would have been like, yeah, of course it's them. So I think I was just looking for some more twists and thrills and surprises in this book and it didn't really deliver that so I ended up giving it like three stars I think. And then the last book that I read for that vlog was Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. This is a thriller about these two men whose grown sons were murdered. They were in a relationship together and after the murder of their sons they are driven on a revenge mission to go find who murdered their sons. One of the fathers is black and one of the fathers is white so it is also a story about racism and there's also also a lot of conversations about homophobia because they were quite homophobic to their sons and now they feel bad about that because their sons are dead and there's nothing they can do to make up for that. I didn't really enjoy this one. I couldn't really get past hating the fathers a lot. Like I just did not connect to them. I did not like them. There wasn't really a way to understand them and the extreme homophobia that they had towards their sons. There really wasn't a way for them to redeem themselves much from that because their sons have already died. And so I just didn't really love this book. I couldn't really connect connect to it. I didn't really enjoy it. Um, I think I gave it like a three star, but it's probably more of like a two star for me. Uh, this was also my in-person book club pick for the month and nobody else really liked it that much either. We all had really similar complaints. So yeah, I know this one's getting a lot of praise, but it just wasn't really for me. Next up, while I was working on that thriller vlog, I also interspersed a non-thriller book into my reading that week. So it wasn't in the vlog, but it was just kind of being read at the same time. And that is The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. I actually buddy read this with my friend Hannah from the 
channel, Hannah's Recent Reads, and we both enjoyed this quite a bit, I would say. I think Hannah probably enjoyed it more than I did, which makes sense just with our reading tastes. I was a little bored with it, but it was also just kind of like a nice palette cleanser. So if you need a palette cleanser book to get you in the fall mood, I think this definitely did that. So this is a fantasy young adult story about this girl who is at this school and she is an ever witch. And in this world, there are different seasonal witches. So you could be a spring witch, you could be a winter witch, you could be a summer witch or a, what season did I not say? Summer, winter, fall, or you could be a spring witch. But she is an ever witch, which is really rare in the world. And it means that she can like pull magic from all the other seasons and all all times like the seasonal witches are strongest in their season but she's like always powerful because she is an ever witch and she is really having to learn over the course of this book how to own and control her magic she's really afraid to use her magic because it has caused bad things in the past because she doesn't have control over it so it's really like a coming of age story as she learns to be proud of and control and understand her magic there's also a romance element into this book and i really liked the character that she had a romance with. He's very much like a cinnamon bun type character. So if you like romances like that, then I think you'll like this. But overall, it's just like a really chill, safe book. You definitely feel very calm when you're reading it. Like there are things happening in the plot that aren't calm, but you know it's gonna be okay. I don't know. There's something about YA sometimes where you're just like, yeah, I can read this. It's a fun little palette cleanser. I know it's all gonna resolve itself. Like nothing too terrible is probably gonna happen in this book. So if you're looking for something to like jump into the fall season, then I think it was a good one. Um, and I think I ended up giving it like three, three and a half stars. I forgot to mention, I was gonna mention this book at the beginning, but I did read Local Woman Missing by Mary Kubica. I was reading that at the end of last month. I think I mentioned it in that wrap up and like preview that I would talk about it, but I don't think I talked about it fully. So I will tell you my full thoughts on that now. Um, I read this as an ebook through my library and thank goodness I did because I kind of hated this book. <laughs> this is one of those stories where women go missing and then years pass and then one of them returns and there's like connections to things in the past and they're just trying to figure out why do these women keep going missing. I had so many things I did not like about this book but honestly I can't even remember all of them because I kind of just wiped it from my mind because I just did not like it. I've heard a lot of good things about this book and it just was not for me. I really really hate stories that include kidnapping or like missing women. It's just so icky to me all the time. Like it never works out in a way that I enjoy reading it. I always am just like, ew. Like that Lisa Jewell book, I did not like that at all. And everyone else loves that book and it's everyone's favorite Lisa Jewell, but I did not like that book. I do remember this book starts with like a very long portion that is these children housed in this basement where they're being held kidnapped. Like a large portion of the first part of the book is just these children being like abused and tortured in this basement that they're living in and it was just gross to read i just hate reading that stuff gosh i really i really don't remember like anything else about this book or how it played out the whole time it was just women disappearing trying to figure out what happened to women in the past one of them has now come back and like how she's meshing with the family. I also remember thinking it was so strange the perspectives that they picked to tell the story because you get, I think, three different perspectives. It's like the brother of the girl who went missing who has now returned, a woman in the town, and then like a woman in the town but 11 years ago. And part of that alone started to make me feel suspicious of things. I was like, why are these the characters that we're getting the story from? Obviously, that means there's gotta be some like reveals that will come along that make it make sense why we're following these characters so yeah I just didn't really like this book I just gave it two stars and I forgot about it and I will never think about it again <laughs> next up I read one of my most anticipated books of the year and that was All's Well by Mona Awad this is a very genre bending book similar to how Bunny was so it definitely has some fantasy elements some horror elements some literary fiction vibes like it's kind of just its own thing. Mona Wad really just writes in her own genre. But this is a story about a college theater director who deals with a lot of chronic pain. She is really suffering with her chronic pain and people don't really believe her. Like the physicians that she goes to see, the people in her life around her, people tell her it's in her head or they just don't understand how it could possibly be that bad. Like no one just relates to her and understands the pain she's in and believes her about the pain that she is in. And she is this college theater director who wants to put on this 
play of All's Well That Ends Well. They do a Shakespeare play like every year, but all the students really want to do Macbeth instead. So she has a lot of issues just like getting everyone on board to do All's Well That Ends Well. She's also got like a past with the play and her history and attachment to it. But where the story really gets going is she ends up in these circumstances in a fantastical sort of way where she gets to get rid of her pain and impose it on others. And that's really all you need to know to go into this book. I think it's best to know as little as possible going into Mona Awad's stories because they're just so weird and they take you on such a wild ride that it's nice to just kind of go in and see where the story takes you. I haven't heard the best reviews of this book. I think people are disappointed with it and I can definitely see why this book's not for everyone. Like Mona Awad's stuff's weird. It's not going to be an enjoyable time for everyone. And I don't know if like enjoyable is even the right word to describe this book. This book is a bit of a labor to get through because you're very much connected to your main character Miranda and the pain that she is going through and that lasts a long time and you really suffer with her through all of that pain and so I can see how that's hard to get through and then parts of the book just feel like an absolute fever dream which I understand why everyone wouldn't love that but I really like this book. I gave it four stars. I thought it was a ton of fun. I've been watching interviews with Mona Awad to hear her her take on the book and sort of the inspiration she had behind it and her attachment to the Shakespeare plays and why she chose to write about this and about her own experience with chronic pain and all of that has just really enriched this story for me. I definitely think this is one I will reread eventually and I just am so amazed by Mona Awad's talent. She is truly just such a great writer and such an interesting writer. She puts together such interesting stories that you just want to dissect and learn more about. Like I want to learn more about these Shakespeare plays. I I want to understand the references. I want to try to figure out what was going on here. Was that character even real or were they a hallucination? Like I just love how engrossed you get in Mona Awad's books. So I had a really fun time with this. Uh, it's definitely not going to be for everyone. If you liked Bunny, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to like this, but I would encourage you if you do read this book to just do some like additional research around it, around the plays, or to hear Mona Awad talking about the book. You can just look up on YouTube Mona Awad interviews, and she did a lot of like virtual book tours for this, so there's a lot of great content out there where you can hear her talk about it, but I really enjoyed it, and I will definitely keep reading the stuff that Mona Awad puts out. Next up, I was still in the thriller mood this month, and so I picked up Mother May I by Jocelyn Jackson. This is a Book that just kind of like slipped on my radar. I don't remember how I found it, but I was doing some like perusing on Goodreads and I ended up coming across this book and I thought the synopsis sounded so interesting. I wanted the book immediately. I ended up getting it on discount through like Barnes and Noble when they did that big sale of theirs and I was so excited to read it. So let me just redo the synopsis that really pulled me into this book. Growing up poor in rural Georgia, Brie Cabot was warned by her single mother that the world is a dark and scary place. Brie rejected her mother's fearful outlook and life has proved her right. Having Having married into a family with wealth, power, and connections, Brie now has all a woman could ever dream of. A loving lawyer husband, two talented teenage daughters, a new baby boy, a gorgeous home, and every opportunity in the world. Until the day she awakens and sees a witch peering into her bedroom window, an old gray-haired woman dressed all in black who vanishes as quickly as she appears. It must have been a play of the early morning light or the remnant of a waking dream, Brie tells herself, shaking off the bad feeling that overcomes her. Later that day, though, she spies the old woman again in the parking lot of her daughter's private school, just minutes before Bree's infant son, asleep in his car seat only a few feet away, vanishes. There's a lot more to the synopsis, but I feel like you get the gist. So I thought it was so interesting, like, oh, this witch is gonna appear and then her baby's gonna disappear. And I know I literally just said a couple minutes ago that I don't like stories about kids being kidnapped, but this didn't seem like it was gonna focus on like the kid kidnapping aspect of it. I was like, oh, there's gonna be a witch. And then it's gonna be like a chase for her to figure out what's going on. And like, what is this witch doing? This book was not that. <laughs> this book started really strong. I was really interested in the beginning to the point where the kid goes missing and a little bit right after the kid goes missing. And then after that, everything was so boring. I was like, why are we following these characters? Why are we following this story? Why is it just them going around asking people what happened? It just was not very good after that. It really started strong and then took a very steep nosedive down. So it ended up being like a two and a half star for me if I'm accounting for how much I was sucked in at the beginning. I also had no idea this was the author of that book, Never Have I 
ever, which I have not read, but I have heard terrible reviews of. So if I would have known before that this was the same author, I probably wouldn't have been so eager to pick it up. But hey, I picked it up, so now you don't have to. And then the last book that I read this month was another one of my most anticipated books of the year, and that is The Dead in the Dark by Courtney Gould. This is a debut novel from this author, and it is a YA horror novel that has like ghosty vibes. And so I was very excited for this one. I also thought the cover was stunning. And I am kind of toggling between like a four and a four and a half star rating for this. But this is like the best YA horror that I have ever read. <laughs> so this is a story about this girl named Logan, whose fathers are these famous ghost hunters. They have this TV called Paraspectors, and they travel around the country together and they go do ghost hunting things. And she ends up just getting pulled along with them from city to city. But now they are returning to her father's hometown, Snakebite, where creepy things are going on, kids are going missing, the weather is like extremely hot or extremely cold, things are just definitely off in this town, and they are there to sort of investigate what is going on in their hometown. Logan ends up teaming up with this girl named Ashley, who is the girlfriend of the first guy who went missing in the town. They are very opposite personalities, but they end up coming together because they both just kind of want this whole thing to be over. Logan wants it to be over so she can leave this town, and the girl wants it to be over so that she can find her boyfriend. And then a sapphic romance begins to bloom. So this is a sapphic romance story in the middle of this haunted ghost town with these dads who are ghost hunters, and it was just spectacular. I really loved it so much. I flew through it. The only reason it's not a five star for me is because the ending was a little bit cheesy and it just didn't feel like we tied everything up quite enough. I really just wanted a little bit more because you find out some pretty shocking details and then we just kind of carry on with that and ride off into the sunset. So I wish we would have done a little bit more in the ending to give me a little more closure. So that's why it's like a four or four and a half star, but I really, really enjoyed this and I have not been hearing the best reviews for it so far. So I was a little bit nervous, but maybe that honestly helped that I went in with lower expectations and then I was just really surprised by it. It was so fun. I flew through it so quickly. I loved these characters. I loved the romance element. I loved ghost element. I thought the mystery was really compelling and really well done. And yeah, this was definitely Definitely like the best YA mystery horror book that I've read so far. So I'd highly recommend that you check it out, especially if you're looking for a good book for spooky season. So these are all the books that I read or DNF'd this month. It was a pretty good month in terms of reading volume and had some pretty good standouts like The Dead in the Dark and Rock, Paper, Scissors and All's Well. So I did come across a couple of new favorites this month and now I am fully ready to go into spooky season with October's reading. So that is it for me. Let me know if you read any of these books and what you thought about them and we can chat about that down below. Below. If you loved any of the ones I loved or hated the books I hated or anywhere in between, definitely let me know so we can chat about that down below. I hope you all had a good reading month and I hope you're excited to head on into spooky season with some spooky reads because I know I am. I'm so excited for my October reads and my October content. So definitely stay tuned for all spooky goodness. <laughs> but that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.